Uh, so the question is about uh, novels that we read when we were younger writers that still stand out, and and yes, there's 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 a there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, uh, um, I mean, I mentioned uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I mentioned Tender as a Night. That's that's a book I read every ten years, and every time I read it, it's as if I've never read it before, and uh, and I'm convinced what happens is that um, all the other previous editions get uh, get mulched by the publisher. <laughs> And then they rearranged all the text <laughs> and add new stuff and then reprint it like that. I'm, I'm sure that's what happens. Um, but that's a book, uh, people talk about that book, Tender as a Night, as a, you know, it doesn't really succeed. It's, there's, there's problems with it, like with the narrative. And, uh, and I don't care. I, I love the broken bits. I love the bits that just don't connect. I think Fitzgerald was getting at something about his life in that book that really captures uh, way better than the, the Great Gatsby. Yeah, you know, that's a great little read, but there's something way more complex in Tender as a Night that spoke to me as in my youth, spoke to me you know, in my mid-30s, and is speaking to me now middle-aged. And I hope 10 years from now will speak to me in a completely revised edition again. <laughs> Um, I, I, for me, I mean, <clears throat> there, were, there were writers, when I first started writing, my first year of university, before that I had no notion of wanting to be a writer. Um, and for me it was poetry. Uh, th and I started out writing poetry and that's all I wanted to write for a long time. Uh, and a lot of the, those early influences were Canadian because I did a ton of Canlit courses. Um, and so, I mean, Al Purdy was a huge influence. Um, Margaret Atwood and Lorna Crozier and Leonard Cohen and, and Don McKay, I mean, that list goes on and on. Uh, in terms of fiction, I think one, one of the first discoveries I made as a young guy uh, where I thought this is something I would love to try to do, Timothy Finley was huge for me. Uh, right, with the wars, not wanted on the voyage, famous last words. But that process, I think, of finding writers who make you want to write is something, if you're lucky, that carries on your whole life. And I mean, the, the most recent big discovery for me was Marquez, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who was a writer I had I avoided my entire life. Like, I just refused to read him because I had it in my head that I didn't like uh, magic realism. Because um, I thought, you know, if, we, if you can do if anything can happen in a book, then the writer has no work to do, right? You write yourself into a corner, an angel comes down, and you just move on. <laughs> but I remember I found that book, finally sat down and read it. And uh, I mean, there's so much in that book that's completely foreign to me, of course. But right from the start, I started thinking, this is just like home. Like, this is just like Newfoundland. And uh, Galore would not exist without, that, without 100 Years of Solitude. Like, that was my attempt. It was like uh, taking down a house in Colombia and shipping all the timbers to Newfoundland, and then building that house in Newfoundland with the materials you find there. So, I was once uh, I, I once represented uh, this nation in uh, in Italy at a, at a at a writers retreat. Well, it was an artist retreat. There was painters and sound musicians there. It was supposed to be me and Rohinton Mystery were were going there to represent Canada. And, and uh, at the last minute, Rohinton didn't show up. He had other other things. So. Uh, the, the other people that were there were, were really disappointed that Rohit Mystery hadn't showed up. And <laughs> they knew nothing about me, but I was from Canada. So for six weeks, I had to field questions on Rohit and Mystery's novels. <laughs> and uh, so when I got back to Toronto, there was, a, there was some event, and, and, and Michael was there with his wife, Holly, and Rohit and Mystery was there too. And so I, I grabbed him by the collar, and I, I said, you, you owe me big time. And then Holly, Michael's uh, wife, went over to Rohinton Mystery and grabbed him and embraced him and said, I've always wanted to meet you, Rohinton. You've written the great Newfoundland novel. And what, he meant, of what she meant was, of course, that which, which one is it? The, 
A fine balance? A fine balance, yeah. That book, which is so regional in and, 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 and India, but for her, it's the, the same colonial enterprise that happened in that book, she could ref it reflected her Newfoundland life. Hmm. And so I forgave for a hint and mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and just a, at that event, I remember Holly telling me about this. There was uh, William Sampson was also there. He was the guy who was uh, arrested in Saudi Arabia f and charged with it and it's an, uh, an explosion, an explosion that killed some people there. And he was tortured in Saudi Arabia and eventually was released and wrote a book about it. And uh, so Holly, at this party, had gone over to Rohinton. And she said to him, you know, I know, she said, Michael hates this, and I know you probably hate people gushing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gush. And went on to say these things about how great that book was and how much it meant to her and about Newfoundland and blah, blah, blah. And while she was talking to him, William Sampson butted in. He said, listen, Rohinton, I just want to say that when I was in prison being tortured in Saudi Arabia, your book kept me alive. And Holly said, oh, fuck. <laughs> How can I compete with that?